In this video tutorial, we're gonna show you how to use the Avada theme. And if you don't know what the Avada theme is, it's the number one best-selling premium theme for WordPress. It's used by almost 1 million people and has an almost five-star rating. With the Avada theme, you have all of these different templates that you can choose from to use to make your own WordPress website. If you want a business website, you have a template that looks just like this. Or if you wanted to make an election website, since it's an election year, you can make a website that looks like this. There are so many different templates that we can show you where you can go and you can look at them all and then choose the one that you want for whatever type of website that you want to make. So if you wanted something like this where you have a consulting website and you don't know how to design it yourself, with the Avada theme, you can just choose the template, import it, and then you'll have everything that you see here. And then we can show you how to use the Avada Builder to customize it. So I don't want to spend too much time just going through some of these templates because we're going to show you all of them in this video tutorial and where you can access them. We're also going to go through the global options for the Avada theme. So you can see here on the Avada dashboard that you have all of these different options that you can customize your WordPress website with. Whether you want to upload a new logo or change the colors for the website, or maybe you want to change the typography or the font style. If this is your first time using the Avada theme, it could be a little overwhelming and sometimes stressful. So I want to make sure in this video that we really break things down so it's really easy to navigate. Whether you want to use the backend builder that you see right here or the live end builder that you see right here. This video is going to show you how you can edit the global layouts for the header. And we're also going to show you how you can edit the footer. The Avada theme also has a layout builder. And what this means is you can create different layouts for your pages and you can go into the settings and set rules for what pages it shows up on and what pages use a different layout. So I want to spend some time on this section so that you know how to use this feature with the Avada theme also. And depending on the template that you choose, you'll have different layout options that you can customize. And later in this video, we'll also show you how you can customize the contact forms to make sure that you get notified whenever someone signs up for the newsletter opt-in or sends you a message using the contact form. So if you're looking for a tutorial that shows you how to use the Avada theme, keep watching this video because we're going to show you everything that you need in order to get a WordPress website up and running so that you can access the pre-built website templates, use the Avada builder and customize your WordPress website however you want. So if you're ready, I'm ready, let's get started. To get the WordPress website up and running with the Avada theme, we have to get hosting and there is an affiliate link in the video description to bring you to the Hostinger website right here. And if you click on that, that does help support this channel. And if you already have hosting, then you can skip the step and go to the Avada theme tutorial. Otherwise, if you need hosting and you're not sure what it is, it helps manage your website, store all of your content, and gives you real control over your website. And so we're going to recommend Hostinger. This is where I go to get my hosting. And you can also get a free domain. We can install WordPress from Hostinger. And you also have the 24-7 customer support and the 99.9% .9 uptime guarantee. And there's also a 30-day money-back guarantee. So there's really no risk in signing up. And down here on this page, you can see that there are some different plans. And I think all you really need is the premium plan because you can host a bunch of different websites. You have a bunch of storage and you can install WordPress. You get the free SSL certificate and the business plan has pretty much everything, a little bit more storage, but you can see all of the features here. So again, you can manage your server, you can secure it, and you have just more control with your own WordPress website when you have your own hosting. So if you come over here, you can just click on choose plan and you're going to go through a checkout process. And what you want to do is choose the billing period. So I like to recommend 12 months just to give yourself enough time. And if you want to use the custom coupon code that we have, you can just type in super one zero and that's going to give you an additional discount. And once you do go ahead and click on the continue button and you can create your own account if you already have one you can just log right in and what you want to do is pause the video to put in your billing information and then also the payment information and then once you're ready you can go through the checkout process and then i'm going to show you how to install wordpress and register your domain once you sign up with hostinger now we can install wordpress so we want to create a new installation and i'm just going to go through the sign up process right here and you can do the same so if you need to, you can pause the video 
and we're going to just choose the other type of website. So you can just choose other or create a blank site. It's really up to you because we're going to install the Avada theme. And what I'm going to do is just find the domain that I want to use. So you can search for your own also. And then once you're ready, click on the next button. And all we're going to do is just wait for WordPress to install. Once we have WordPress installed on our new WordPress website, we can go and check it out. So you can see right here, I'm on the Hostinger dashboard and I'm just going to click on the admin panel button and you should come to the WordPress website and this is the WordPress dashboard. And if you have Hostinger installed, you should see this setup right here. What I'm going to do is just clean things up really quickly. So I'm going to hover over plugins and click on install plugins. And if you have Hostinger installed also, you can do the same. And I'm just going to check these two Hostinger plugins and deactivate them. So I'll click on apply right here. And then you can delete them if you want. I'll just keep them though, just in case you do want to activate them, but we don't really need them. And if you want to see what your WordPress website looks like right now, before we install the Avada theme, you can hover over your website name and click on visit site. And you should see a WordPress blog like this with the default template. And what we're going to do is we are going to go and get the Avada theme first and set everything up. And then we can go through our settings and all these other tabs. But this is really where you go to customize your website. So you have your blog posts, upload images or media, create pages, and then you have the themes right here, plugins, and also your general settings. So if you want to get the Avada theme and you don't have it yet, there is a link in the video description to bring you to the ThemeForce website. Go ahead and click on that. So you should see the Avada theme right here. And this is the ThemeForce website. And there's almost a million people that have used this theme to make their own WordPress websites. And again, you can always click on the link and check out the features yourself. I'm just going to come up to the top and show you how to get this. So we're going to click on add to cart right here. And just remember there is a one-time fee in order to use all of the premium features, access all the templates and also get all of the updates. And you do get six months of support with the Avada theme developers. So I'm just going to click on checkout now and you can pause the video to go through the process of creating an account and then just clicking on create and then go through the billing process. And then once you do, I'm going to show you the files that we're going to download in order to install the Avada theme. So once you have the Avada theme, we want to go and download the files that we need. So we should download all the files and documentation. So download that zip file and then we can get the purchase code also to activate the theme. So once we have both of those, we're going to go back to the WordPress dashboard and to install the Avada theme, we can hover over appearance and click on themes. And what you want to do is click on the add new button and then click on upload theme. And then we can go into the folder. And you can see right here, I have the Avada folder with all the files and I want to open up the Avada theme folder and then you have the Avada.zip. I'm going to just select that and upload it and then we can click on the install now button and this will only take a few seconds and once it's installed, we can click on activate. Now that it's activated, what we want to do is we want to register the Avada theme. So if you have the purchase code, go ahead and copy and paste it right here. And then click on the register button and this is going to give you access to all the pre-built templates, the auto updates, and also the premium plugins. And now you should see the setup type. And if you need to, you can click on this tab to come over here and you can create a new website or use the pre-built templates. And with the Avada theme and all the different templates, this is what I would recommend. But before we do that, let's come down here. And if you want to change your site title, you can do that right here. So I'm going to change this to something like Jane's therapy because I'm going to create a therapy website or at least use a psychology type of theme for my template, but it's up to you. Maybe you have a store or a business or photography, whatever it is, go ahead and type that in. And then I'm going to click on next step. And right here, we're going to select the website template that we want to use. And you have the classic option, which is very, very popular. And we have tutorials on this. And a lot of people probably have created tutorials for this one. So I'll link you to the one that we have for the NYC Tech Club YouTube channel. And then you have some of these new ones also. So there's vaping, campaign, portfolio, all of these different options. I'm just going to go into the sidebar over here and just select one of these options. I think I'm going to go into the health and beauty and check this out. And here's the one that I want to use. So I'm going to click on the preview for psychology. 
But again, as I let this load, I'm going to come back here. You can choose any of these options. So I'm going to show you how to use the Avada theme, walk you through a lot of the options and you'll be off and running on your own with creating your website because everyone's gonna have their own unique type of website that they wanna make. So if you want any of these options, you can just select whatever you want. Again, you have over 100 different templates that you can choose from. So I'm gonna to go to this tab right here and we have the preview page. And I like this one. This is the one that I showed in the introduction or at least the one that I decided that I wanted to really do a test run on. So I'm going to import this and what I'm going to do is back on that button for the psychology one. I want to select this and we can just click on complete setup. So we're going to kind of install all of these different options. So it might just take a minute or two and I will just wait for everything to install. And you should see that everything is set up now and we can go and visit the site. So go ahead and click on the link below the button. Once everything is set up, now you can go to visit the site. So you should see the button that says visit site. You can click on it and you'll see the template as your WordPress website now using the Avada theme. So whichever template that you're using, it should show up and this is awesome. And now what we can do is I'm gonna go back to the WordPress dashboard. So I'm gonna hover over the website name, click on dashboard, and I wanna show you how to edit everything. So first we are going to go and edit the header section. So to do that, I'm gonna hover over Avada right here. I'm gonna go into the dashboard and we can go into layouts and I'll show you how to use the Avada Builder. So for layouts, you're going to see all your different layouts here and we're gonna go into this a few different times because we have different page layouts for different pages. So you have the default page, alternative, posts, archives, even on an alternative homepage or depending on whatever template that you're using, you might have different layout options, but I'm gonna just show you how you can go in here and customize this stuff. So first we're gonna do the global header. So this is gonna be for all of the website and all of the different pages. You're gonna see this header section where we have a top bar and then the header section. So maybe you don't have this exact one, but it doesn't really matter. The global header is where you're gonna to go to edit and customize whatever you wanna do. So right here in the global layouts, you can see that we have a global header and a global footer. So that means that these are gonna show up on all your different pages. So I'm gonna click on the pencil right here to edit this page and it's gonna open up the header. And this is the back end. So this is the default Avada Builder. And you can see that we have our different sections. So we have the top bar right here and then we have the header section with the menu and the site title. And you wanna see some layout options here. We don't have to change anything. And I just wanna really just focus on showing you what to do so you don't get too confused. So if I go into the header logo section and we're gonna open up the live builder in a section, but you can see right here for the logos, we have two different site titles and also two different menus. And just know that this is because the website is responsive. So if you see doubles of certain things and you're wondering how come you don't see doubles on the actual page, it's because some of these are hidden for different devices. So the menu for this one is gonna show up on the desktop and then the menu right here is just gonna show up on the iPhone, Android, iPad, those devices. And the way to check that is if you go into any one of these, if you just click on the pencil right here, you're going to see for this menu that the element visibility is just for the large screen. So that's kinda your desktops, your laptops, but it doesn't have these options selected right here. So if I go into the second menu here and click on the pencil, you can see that the visibility for this menu, which is the same exact menu, but it only has the small and medium screen selected. So that means that it's hidden on the large screen and that's really just for spacing stuff. So you have different edit op options here to customize and make sure it shows up correctly. So that's just something that I want you to know in case you see two of the same elements and you're confused as to why that is. So I just wanna make sure that you're aware of that because even when I use the Avada or I don't use it after a while and I come back to it, there's some new stuff and I'm sometimes confused and it takes so long to figure out that I wanna make sure that you don't have to spend that much time being confused either. So we're gonna turn on the live builder right here and that's going to allow us to see everything that we're going to be editing. So you should see the Avada Builder now and we're only editing the header for this section for the global default layout. So we can only edit this stuff, but let me just give you a tour really quickly because you're going to see these buttons on all of the pages for the Avada Builder. First, we have the sidebar. If we click on this, 
we have the global options. So you have all of your different options here for the website. And then you have the layout for the sections right here. This is the stuff on the page when we scroll down to the bottom on the back end. And then right here we have the navigator. And on the navigator, this is what we saw on the back end with those two boxes with all of our different elements in there. So we have the top bar and then the logo and the navigation or the menu section. So over here, you can see that you have the live builder so you can actually see what you're editing. So right here is the top bar. And if I hover over this, you can see that we can click on the edit button and then we have the element right here. And then you can edit whatever you want. So if you wanna change the alignment or the content alignment, the spacing, in the design tab right here, you can change the width for these two sections or these sections. And then you have your spacing over here. And then if you scroll down, you'll see some additional options. We don't need to go through all of this stuff because we just wanna make sure that we know how to use the Avada Builder so that we can customize our website and get it up and running. So for the background for the column right here, you can see that you have your different options. So there's the slider, image, gradient, and color. And then we can go into the extras right here. And then you can see that you can make this a sticky position or absolute, all these different options. And we'll cover what's important as we go through this. So for now, I'm gonna close this. And what I wanna do is for the top bar, if you wanna change the background color, then right here we can just hover over top bar click on edit and you can change the height if you want to but I'm just going to go into these different tabs and make sure that we edit what we need to so for the top bar if you click on the background button right here you can change your background color so you have these default colors which are in the global layout so if you want to change that I'll show you how to but right here you can just select whatever the default colors are if you want to edit whatever you want to change or you can click on the ball right here or the dot and then you can drag this to be whatever colors you want. You can see that you have this color wheel, okay? So super easy to do this. And then once you have everything, again, you have these buttons here. You can hover over them and see what they are. So you can undo, you can change things to responsive, whatever you need to do. And then even for the background, you have these different options. But we're just using the color. So I will just keep it just like this. And then we can close this. And over here, you can see that you have the save button. So whenever you make any edits or changes, you can always click on the save button to save those. And over here, you can preview this. So if you open up a new tab, if you click on this, you'll see what the header or the website looks like. And then right here is the responsive button. So you can see what the section looks like or the page on these different devices when you click on these icons. So I'm gonna stay on the desktop right here, but if you wanted to edit the website, based on the mobile device, then you can just select this option and then edit everything. So again, we're just doing the header right now. And if you can't see all of these options, because there are two different text boxes here, there's this first one, which is the text box or the checklist. You can see it has the opening hours and you can just come in here and click to edit this, change the text, and then you can close this. And then you can do the same for the phone number right here. So you can click on the pencil and then again, click on edit. And then you have your phone number right here. And then if you wanted to add an icon or use one of these, then you can also do that. So I'm not gonna change the icon here, but I wanna show you that if you can't see everything, all you have to do is just hide the sidebar. And then you can see that you have these two sections. And if you even just hover over these columns right here, you can see that you can edit the element. So again, this is the column right here, this whole box. And then if I wanna edit this other one, I can click in the pencil here, and then I can edit it however I want. So that's all you have to do to edit these sections right here. And then over here, you can see that we have our logo and the text, and then we have our main navigation and a button. So if you wanna change the column size for this stuff, again, just like up here, and I know like everything's kind of flashing around, so I wanna make sure that I don't go too fast that you can't even see the mouse. But right here for the column, I can click on the pencil and then I can change the alignment if I wanted to. And if I go into these other tabs for the design tab, I can change the width of this section because this is three fourth and then this is the other fourth of the entire row. And then again, if you wanna change the background color, which you don't have to, and then you have these other options here. So we don't need to change this right now. We can leave it just like this 
And then for the menu option, if you have your own menu or maybe you want to edit this menu, you can click on the button here. Or if you have a lot of other menus that you created, and I'll show you where you can go to make them in just a little bit, then you can select the menu that you want to show up on the global header. Okay. So that's all you have to do there. And then right here we have our logo and then the title. And again, you have two of these because we have it for the responsive mobile device and also the desktop. So we have the image element right here. And if we want to edit this, we can click on the pencil and you can see that we have the image right here. So this is a dynamic content. So what that means is right here, if I click on this, we have certain things that we can just select. And right here we have the logo and that's what is showing up right here. So I can collapse this. And if you want to update the logo image for your website, what you can do is in the global options right here, if you come down to logo, you can click on logo and then you can change the alignment right here. And then you can also upload the logo right here. So you have the retina option and the default one. And then you can also upload a favicon if you want it to. And that's what's showing up in the image section right here. So that's all you have to do for the logo, but you can always go into these other tabs. You can change the size if you wanted to, and you have other options. And again, you don't need to do any of these other things. I just really wanted to show you how you can edit that logo. So again, it's going to be in the global options and then you can just click. And if you accidentally delete this again in the edit image, then all you have to do is click on the little icon right here that says dynamic content, but you can always just upload your own image here too, if you wanted to. And you have all of the demo content if you click on that plus button right here. So I'm going to just add that logo one more time just to show you. And you can search for it if you wanted to. So I can just type in logo right here and it'll just show up just like this. And once I have that, now you can see that we have the title section. And again, you can see that we have two titles and one is for the desktop and the other is for the smaller screens. And for the site title, you can't actually change it here. So you're going to have to change it in the settings, but I'm going to show you how, again, you can add this back in the dynamic tab. So you can just type in site title right here and it'll show up just like this. I'll go into the options to show you where to change this in just a little bit in the settings, but let's close this for now. And again, you have the other one for the mobile devices. So if you wanted to see what it looks like, you have the tabs here and then you can click on edit and then right here you have the menu so we can click in and edit this one and you have it for the large screens and then you have the other one for the medium and the small screens and if you want to change the menu you can go into your drop down and you'll see a list of all the menus that you have created if you want to edit this menu then you can click on the button and it'll bring you back to the wordpress dashboard and under appearance right here in menus this is where you can go to edit your menu so you can see that this is the main menu. If I wanted to create a new menu, I could do that. And then I have all of my menu navigation items here. And you can see you have your pages list right here. So you can always just add whatever you wanted to into the navigation menu right here. And then you also can create blog posts or add the blog posts, custom links, categories, all this stuff. So right now we're not going to do too much here, but this is just what you would get if you click on the edit menu button. So it already has the main menu selected for the desktop and I'm going to close this and then same for the other devices. So right here, I'll click on element options and you can see again, we have the main menu just selected just like this, but you can also choose the tablet one if you wanted to, and you can change the visibility and the spacing, all this stuff. You have all these different tabs that you can go through. We don't have to change anything here. And you can see that you have a button here. If you want the button to be edited or removed, what you want to do is go back into the menus and you want to edit the menu. So I'm going to go back into that tab on the dashboard just to show you really quickly. And again, this is under appearance right here and menus that you have in each of these labels. If you open it up, you have the Avada menu option. So even with resources here, you have it. So for the button to show up, you want to click on Avada menu options. You'll get this pop up right here. And then if you choose to have a button, then that button is going to show up for the navigation item. If you have the default style, it's just going to be a normal link. So you can see for contact us, it had the button selected, but then for resources, you can see it's the default style. Okay. 
So I'm also gonna link you or create a new video on the Mega Menus for the Avada theme. So make sure you're on the lookout for that because the Mega Menu kind of needs its own video, but there is a cool little feature for that. So for the menu, we are good for now. I'm gonna close out of this. And that's pretty much all you have to do for the header. And again, if you make any changes, if you wanna add stuff, you can always hover over this and then you can add different columns if you wanted to, you can delete stuff, you can even save stuff. So I'm gonna click save here. We're gonna go back, edit the site title and the settings and then go into the Avada Builder for the home page. okay? So if you're ready, I'm going to click on the exit button over here and I'm gonna go back to just the back end just so that you can see. So I'll close these other tabs and we have the global header right here and I wanna go to the settings just to show you where you can edit the site title. So if you hover over settings right here, you can click on general and in the general settings right here, this is where you can edit the site title. So you can change your website name if you want. You can add a tagline. You can even change the admin email address right here. And then once you do that, you wanna click on the save button and everything else should be set up. So you have the reading tab, which is going to select the home page for you. So if you want to change that to another default page, if you have a blog post page, you can select that over here. And then it's going to just go to that blog post URL that WordPress has set up. And then your permalinks, I think everything should be selected for you, but I do like to make sure that the post name option is selected because it's the best one for SEO and it's the most user friendly. So just click on save if you make any changes there. And now what we can do is again, you have the Avada options. So before we go to the home page and start customizing stuff, let's just go through these other options or these other settings in the Avada builder. On the dashboard right here, we can go into the layouts. But before I do that, I do want to just show you that you do have the option of having the back end to view your different options for your default settings. So if you wanted to just kind of see the color options here that you can change the color palette, you can update the colors and then you can see that you have your primary color and maybe you want to change these if you don't like what the default template that you imported from the Avada theme has for these colors. Once you change these colors in the color one through 10, you're going to have them in this palette right here so that you can just click to choose whatever color that you want. It just makes it a lot easier and you don't have to make sure that it's the right color and all that stuff but you can also just use the color palette whenever you want to update something one off. But you can see now that if I wanted to just change my primary color, I can just choose the color seven or choose color five, super easy, and then I can just click on save. So this is just an option for you. It has everything that we saw earlier in the global options on the live builder. So you don't need to do anything here for the header because we use the global layouts. And then for the logo, Again, this is all the same stuff. You can upload your logo right here. And then if you wanna change your font family or style, you have the typography right here. So you can go into your headings, change the color, same with the body, whatever it is that you want, click on save. And then you can also change the colors over here. We're not gonna go through everything. And if we need to, we can always come back to this stuff. But if you wanted to go into social media, you can create the social media links over here so you can always add some additional ones if you're using a module from the Avada theme that can populate this stuff and we'll talk about forms a little bit later because we're going to go to the contact page so for now I'm just going to leave everything as is but I did want to just show you that you do have the option of checking out your global options on the back end it's a little cleaner I think it's a little easier but it's up to you so on the layouts page right here again, let's go down and for the global layout, we have to go and edit the footer. So I'll click on the pencil and we can also go to the live builder. But before I do that, I just want to remind you that you can always edit the back end. This is the same stuff as the front end. You just can't really see what you're doing. You have to go to the preview page or really just go and check it out yourself. So we have all of our different sections. We have the layout section options, the builder, and I'm gonna turn on the live builder and you can do the same if you're going to edit your footer. And I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom of the page because we are editing this stuff right here. So you can see that we have a section right here with three columns and some modules inside. And then another section right here with a footer and copyright. 
So if you want to edit your global options, again, you can do this on the back end, but you can do it right here also. And you can update the colors and your typography, all that stuff right over here also. So I'm gonna go into the navigator and you can see right here that we have an image. And so it's this column right here. And then we have a text block and we have another column, another column, and then another column. If we wanna change the background, we wanna do it for the entire section right here. So we have the edit container right here. And if we click on this, we can see the element right here. And you can change the width if you want it or the alignment. But really all we have to do is we can come into the background and you can see that we have the color option right here. So if you have your color palette, you can change it to another color if you wanted to. And you wanna make sure that it fits your website. You can also use any of these other tabs if you wanna add a background image or something else. And you can reset this. And you also have the history button here for all your steps that you went through. So just keep that in mind. And I'm just going to close this. And we don't have to go through everything. I'll just kind of give an overview again of some of the stuff. So this is something new. This is an image module. So if we just click on the edit, instead of using the site logo from the dynamic content, an image is uploaded. So if you want to remove this and then click on edit, you can upload your own images or your content right here on the upload files tab and just click on select files, upload everything. You have all of your demo content here and we have the logo selected. So you can just click on insert if you are uploading something on your own. And if you want to change any of the settings, you can do that here. And then down here you have the text box. So let's go back to the navigator really quickly. And we don't have any, and we don't have any duplicates. So that means that everything is just going to be seen on all the different devices the same way. So we don't have to check the mobile and the iPad and all that stuff. We can just hover over this, click on text box. You can change your text here. You have some options that you can format stuff. And then what you can do is go into the design tab. If you want to change the font family, you can do that in typography. You can also change the font color over here if you wanted to with any of the color palette options or even using the little palette right here. So I'll just change this back to, let's say the color number one. And over here we have another title. So we have a text block. So I'm gonna just come over here and click on this. You can change your title if you want to. And then right here is just another menu. So I'll close this and it's always easier just to see the navigator, but you can always hide this if you want to. So in the menu, this is the same as the header. And then we can click on menu. So you can come into the drop down, select your menu. And if you want to edit the menu, you can always go back to the dashboard. And once you make your changes, you can close this. And then the only other thing that's new here on this section is the Avada form. So if I wanted to click on the pencil, you can see that this is a form. And if you want to edit it, you have to go to the dashboard. So we're going to jump back and forth a little bit. So again, I'm going to click on the edit form button. So we can just click on edit forms and it's going to open up a new tab to the newsletter form. And if you ever want to go to any of your forms, if you hover over Avada, you have forms right here. So I'll just open up a new tab just to show you really quickly. Over here, you have the form builder so you can create your own forms, but you also have a list of the forms that are already created for the website template. So this is just something that we can discuss a little bit more when we go over the contact page. But right now we have the newsletter and you can see it's just the Avada Builder again, just like the web page that we're on right now. But down here you have this Avada form options and you can see that you have all of the settings already set up. And what I want to do is come down to notifications and we want to put in our email address so we can get contacted whenever someone does sign up, so we're notified. So if we just click on add notification, this is where you would go to put in the email address that you want for any messages that are sent to you or newsletter sign up. So I'm just going to type in sign up notification right here, and you can type in whatever label that you want. And right here is where you want to put in the email address that is going to be sent a message whenever someone signs up or whenever someone sends you a message, depending on whatever contact or whatever form that you're using. So you can see right here, it says enter the email address for the form where the data is going to be sent. So I just put in my own email address and then you can just kind of come down and check out all this other stuff. You can put in the email so you can put in your website name right here. 
and you have a bunch of other stuff that you can go through, but this is really just what you want to do. So you want to make sure that you do put in the email address for the notification and then you want to click on update to save that. Once you do that and you can go through these other tabs if you want to, over here for the live builder, we want to turn this on and this is just something for you if you want to edit. So again, we have the footer right here. If you want to change the form right here, then you would just edit it using the builder. So you have all of your sections right here and you have these other fields here. So you have the text field for your name and you can just see that you put in the placeholder text here for your name. And then if this is a required field, then you can just disable this. So right now it's required and then same for the email. So you can just click on this one and it's a little different. So these are just modules. And if you ever want to add some additional modules, you can see that you can always just click on the plus button and right here it says add element below. So you can click on that and then you have these form elements right here and you can just add whatever you want. So maybe you want to add a phone number one. So we can click on this and you can see that we have it here and then you can add your phone number. So we can just type in phone number and then if it is required, you can select this option or disable whatever it is that you want to do. And I'm just going to remove that though. And then you have this notice right here. So after your message is sent and if there's an error, then you have this success message and this error message. So we don't have to change anything here. I just wanted to kind of show you the form and we can go over this again with the contact form. But if you make any changes, you want to click on save right there and then you can exit out of this. I'm just going to close it because we have the footer right here. And again, this is how it shows up. So we have the Avada form right here. And then down here, this is just another column. So again, you can change the width or the alignment. And then if you want to change this text right here, you want to click to edit the text block. And you can see that the content is a dynamic content. So this is the date. So you can come in here and you can see that we have the format. So it's just the date and then the before. So maybe we want to change this to, let's change this to 24. You can click on the text block. And what you're going to see is that the content is this dynamic content. So it's this date module and all we have to do is click on the edit button and then you can change the formatting. You can click on this to change it if you want. You can put in the website years if you wanted to. So maybe we can just do present or 2020 or whatever it is that you guys want to. So let me just change this just for fun. And then down here is where all this text is that says Avada website. So this is all HTML. You might want to copy this and then remove some of the stuff. So instead of saying theme fusion, we can say studio designs made this website. So I'm just going to change it just like that. Okay. Super easy. But again, just copy and paste all this and then paste it back in. This is HTML. If you have any questions about it, just let me know. I'm going to close this, but that's all you have to do for the footer. And again, it's just a bunch of clicking, changing options. And if you want to design or change some of the style, then you can, then you just click save and you're good to go. So I'm going to close out of this. So we have the header and the footer done. So before I go back to the layouts over here in the builder, and I don't want to talk about these different layouts yet because I think it might confuse everyone. And I want to just show you how to use the Avada Builder first. And then when we go to certain pages, I can talk about how they're set to these layout options. So I'm going to go to the homepage for the Avada theme WordPress website. And you can see it right here. And what I want to do is I'm going to go to the back end. So I'm going to click on edit page. And if you need to on the dashboard over here, you can always go into pages and then just click on the front page or the home page. So you'll see it over here. And I'm going to rename my home page to just home. And over here, I will make sure that there is no parent because I want this to be a standalone page. And I'll just click update really quickly. And once I have that saved, again, we have the backend builder right here with all of our different sections. And we're going to show you how to customize it on the live builder, but you can always do the backend also. So if you see that you have some sections again that might have duplicates just remember that it's for the different screen sizes so you can always expand these and then you can click to edit the section right here you have your tabs and you can go into each one of these and you have your modules that you can click to edit and then if you want to add anything you can just click on the plus button here for any of these sections so again you can always just come down and add a new container or column whatever you want 
But before we do anything else, I want to just note at the bottom over here, you have the Avada page options. So like the layouts, the header, the footer, they had those section options, I believe. So here you can see everything is already set up, but if you ever want to customize anything, maybe the layout for this specific page or the type of header, if this is given as an option, and then the title bar. So right here, we're using the default option instead of selecting anything. And then the content, all this stuff, there are some different options here. We don't have to actually do anything because we imported our website. But just in case, if you are creating a new page, you might want to change some of your settings here. So I'm going to go to the live builder and I'll show you how to use it to customize some of these sections. So you'll see the home page right here and we already went through the Avada Builder, but you can see that we have our default header at the top and you can always go back into the layout to change this if you wanted to. But over here we have our first section and we don't have a title bar. All we have is the content. So if I open up the sidebar right here and I go into the navigator, you can see that we have all of these different sections. So in each of these sections, we have different columns, different rows, different modules, all this different stuff. So what we're going to do is just go through some of this. So first for the intro, we have our two columns right here and we have our image. So if I hover over this, what I can do is I can click to edit the column first and you can see that we can change the alignment for this entire section, this whole box. And then if I wanted to go to the design, I can change the percentage. Right here is 45% and then this is 55% for the width. But we don't need to change any of this stuff. So I just want to focus on what we would have to change for the home page just to make sure that we know how to use the Avada Builder. So you can hover over this and you can also see that it's an image. So if you ever want to edit this, you can just click on the pencil. You can add elements below and then you can move them just by clicking and dragging. You can also just move this by clicking the entire element wherever you want to go. So if we click into image options right here, you can change the image and this is one large image. So if I wanted to, I can remove this. I can click on the edit button. If you have your own images, maybe that you want to use, you can always click on the upload files tab and then just click on select files right here and then upload whatever file that you want to use. If you have the demo content, you can add one of these images. So let's say for example, maybe we want to add this one and I can click insert. You can see that it shows up and we say, oh, I don't really like that. You have two options. You can go back into the history and you can undo this or you can just add another image. So I'm going to just select the one that we have and just click insert and there we go. So over here on this side, again, you can edit the column, but then you also have the entire section. So this is called the container, which is the entire box for this entire section. You can edit this. You can change the name if you wanted to. And these are all just text boxes and a button. So if we look over here, we have our image and then we have the other column right here. So we have a text block, we have a title, text block and button. And just remember that if there are duplicates like this, that means that they're for different screen sizes and there's probably just different design settings. So first for the first text block, if we just want to click and edit this one, we can come in here and you can see it says text block. You can change the title for this right here. And then if you wanted to change the font color, just go into the design tab. You can change the font size, the family, and then also the color right here. So you have all of your different color palette options if you want to change that. And just remember that you can see what the website looks like on different devices and you can click save if you make any changes. And then you have your title section. So I want to just show you for these two titles right here. Again, we only see one because of the screen size, but if we click into this first one, and you see the element visibility, it's just for the large screen. And then for the design tab, you can see that the setting is H1. And if I go to the other one, so if we come in here, just to make sure, you can see that the element visibility is selected for the small and the medium size. And then for the design tab here, you can see that the font size is also included right here. So these are just different settings for the different screen sizes. Okay. So if you decide or say, Hey, wait, this doesn't look good on my mobile device. Then all you want to do is just change the element visibility and then add an element to customize for that screen size. So for some people, they just want to make sure their website looks good on the mobile device. 
So you can always just edit everything just looking at this screen and not really worry about the desktop or laptop. Maybe all your visitors come from the iPhone or Android device. So it's really up to you how you want to go about this. I usually focus or I always think about the desktop first for some reason with my websites, but maybe I shouldn't because a lot more people use, I think their iPhones or smartphones more often than their laptops and desktops. But that's just something that I think about. So it's up to you guys. And then now in this other section right here, again, you have another container. So you can always click to edit this and then you can have as many different columns as you want. So that's right here in this three box section. So you can see we have three different columns and you can just go into each one of these and edit them however you want. So we didn't go over this button right here, but I can go into it for this other one. So for the button right here, you can change the URL and also the text title for the button. And you can see when you hover over it, it might have some type of different color. Same with the button up here. So what we want to do after we have the URL and the text updated is you want to come into the design tab and we can keep the button style how it is. But what we want to do is over here in the start and the end color, what you're going to notice is that you have these little icons over here. And what you want to do is you want to edit the colors for the default state, which is what you see here. And then also for the hover state. So you can click on this icon and that's going to give you the hover colors. And you'll notice that it changes right here. So you can change the colors to whatever colors you want. So if I wanted to use the screen color, then we can do that. And we don't have to do the gradient. We can actually just change it to both of these. So now when I go back to the default state, it's going to look like this. And then when I hover over it, it changes to the new color. So this is how you can do that. You have the normal and then the hover option. So you want to be able to edit this. And I just wanted to show you that because it's kind of hard to know how to do that because they don't really give you labels or anything like that. You just kind of have to figure it out on your own. And that's one of the things that makes these tutorials fun to make is finding these little Easter eggs or these difficult things and kind of like letting you guys know so that you can actually edit your website and not get frustrated. Um, sometimes I even have to take a lot of time and try to figure it out and go back and forth wondering what the heck is going on. So that's what you would do there. And again, you have the same thing over here so you can edit this stuff. And if you don't really see the section here, you might want to hide the sidebar so you can see everything. And this is what this one looks like. So if you want to edit this, then you can again, go back into the sidebar and then go into the navigator and just see that this is just a separator. So there might be some background or something and we can just see maybe there is background for the column. So I can hover over the edit column right here and click on that and then just go into the background. And if I go into the image, you can see right here, this is the background. So if you want to edit this, maybe change it to a color or gradient or whatever, you can do that. You can remove this also. So I'm not going to go through every section here because there's a lot of different sections, but it's kind of just the same thing over and over again. You can see right here though, there is this parallax scroll for this section where there's this background image. And then when you scroll through it, it looks like this section and the one above it kind of overlap this. So for the scrolling right here, this is that parallax effect. And what we can do is we can go into the edit container. So this entire section, we can just click on the edit. And in the section right here, if we go into the background where the image is, so I'm going to hover over this and you can see that we have the image right here. So you would put in your own image and then you have these options here. So you can just follow along and you can see that you have the background parallax right here. So it's a fixed option for the desktop and non-fixed for mobile. That means that you won't have this effect if we were to look at this on the mobile device. And I'm just going to scroll down just to see. So you can see it doesn't scroll like it does on the desktop because of the option right here. But this is what you would select for the parallax option. So just keep that in mind and you can always remove this by clicking on no effect also. Okay, so that's all you have to do for the parallax option. And let's see where that was. That was over here and we can just kind of go through this. And again, the background color or image, it's always going to be, or most likely not always, but it's going to be in the edit container. So you can always change the name for these sections. And then over here you have the color or the slider. It's a background color for this one. So you can change it to whatever colors you want. And I'm going to just make sure that 
it looks nice and clean, but that's what you want to do. And then you have another image here, some text boxes, and I'm just going to scroll through this page and see if there's anything else that we kind of have to edit. So again, you might see some duplicate sections also, and those are just for the different screen sizes. And you have another parallax effect over here. And then you have a contact form. If you remember from the footer section, we can edit this if we just click on the edit form options. And then right here, we can click on the edit form. It'll bring us back to the WordPress dashboard. And this is another form here. And again, you have your options and this is the back end. And then you can go into notifications once again. And for each of these forms, you want to put in the email that you want the notification to be sent to. So you can fill out all this information. You probably want to do that wherever you have a form. So this is for appointments. So I'll just put in appointment notification from email or from website. And it you should probably spend more time with a better label on all that stuff. But this is just something just to remind you guys. And you'll want to do this for the contact page also. So if you do make any changes, you want to make sure that you click on the update button over here because you want to save those. And then you can go into the live builder, customize the form however you want. So again, this is just for the contact form or the appointment form. And you have all your fields here and you can kind of check out the footer section again to see how to edit this stuff if you need help. So I'm going to close this and go back to the home page. I don't think there's anything else that we really need to edit here. Just make sure that you update the links to your buttons. And if you want or have any questions, let me know. I'm going to go to the other pages just to kind of show you the layout options. So I'm going to click save here. And if you want, you can pause the video to edit your own home page. Or if you want to keep watching to see how you can customize the layouts or choose your options for these other pages, we're going to do that right now. So I'm going to go back to the dashboard. So back on the WordPress dashboard, now what I'm going to do is talk about the different page layouts. So if we go back to the layouts page here, this is the layout builder and you have different page options. And on this tab right here, I'm also on the WordPress dashboard and I'm going to go to the pages list to open up a few different pages. So I have the about page right here and maybe I'll open up the resources page and let's see what these two pages look like. So we have the about page and you have the title section right here, all your content, different rows and everything like that. And then for the resources page, you can see it's a similar title section, but this is on the left hand side, the text. So what you want to do is for the layouts for these pages, they are connected to the layout builder. So what that means is I'm going to close these. So we kind of focus just on this right now on the layout builder right here, you have these different pages or different options. So if you go into the layout options, so again, all I did was I just clicked on the wheel right here. You can see the conditions. So it's going to show up for all your pages because the green check mark is right here. And then it's not going to show up on the front page because you have this X right here. And it's also not going to show up for these specific pages that are X'd out. So that's what the rule is right here. It says all pages are going to use this layout except for these pages. So that means that the about page is probably using this layout and this layout has this page title bar. So this is a section that was customized for this layout. Everything else is going to use the default settings. So you have the global header that kind of just flows over here. And then if we use the alternative page, let's see what the rules are here. So I'm going to open up the conditions and you can see that the resources page is included in this layout. So it has the green check mark here. What that means is that it's using this alternative header and the page title bar that is showing up for this section. So if we want to, we can click to edit this page title bar. And I'm also going to open up a tab to show this one. I think the text is just going to be different for the alignment. So on the Avada Builder page for each of these sections, what you're going to see is the builder right here. And we can turn on the live builder for the page layout. And then this one is for the alternative page. You can see it says it right there. I'm going to turn on the live builder here also. And you can see on the live builder for the alternative layout that the text is right here. It's aligned to the left hand side. And you can see that if I hide the sidebar. So what it's going to do is take the background image from the whatever page we're using this layout for, and then also the heading and text for the page over here. So if you want to edit any of this stuff, you can see that what you can do is 
first you can go into the content and see if you have the color background. So you have that right there. You can customize that and change that. And it also uses the featured image. So this will be important when I go back to the pages, but just kind of going over this other stuff. If I go into the title section, you're going to see that it takes the heading and then it's visible on certain devices. And then it's also aligned to the left. And then for the other page layout, you can see it has a background image right here. So I think this is just for the column. So if I go in here and I go to background and I click on image, you can see it takes whatever featured image from whatever page that has this layout. And then same with the text, this one should be centered. So if I come in here, it has the heading. And then if I come into the design, this is for the page layout and it's centered just like the about page. So what you would do if you want to customize any of these layouts is just kind of come in here and then change whatever layout you want, or you even create some new ones and then just create some rules for your pages. So just keep that in mind. And there is an alternative homepage option one right here and search all these things that you can customize on your own. It's very detailed, takes a lot of time, but this is what the Avada theme is all about. It's really detailed. It has a lot of options for you. So if I just go back to the WordPress dashboard here on the pages, and if I go into the edit page for the about page on the back end, now, if I want to change that background image with that featured image, what I would do is on the right hand side over here, you have the featured image and you want to update this. And this is what's going to show up as the background image. Okay. So just keep that in mind. And then for the header section, this is going to flow through from the default settings. And then right here for the page title bar, this is where you can put in the heading. So if you want to change the text for the title or even the subtext, then you would do that right here. And then if you want, you can go through these other settings. You can see that there's no sidebar selected right now, but you can always enable that. And then the footer is going to flow through the global layouts also. So now that we know how to customize the title for at least the about page, and I'll remind you again, we can just go to the live builder and with the featured image that we uploaded on the back end with the title and the subtitle, it'll show up right here. And then everything else you can kind of customize using the Avada Builder just by doing the same thing that we did on the other page and the header and the footer. Just clicking in here, changing the image or adding stuff, whatever you want to do. So again, if you need a reminder, you can always click on the edit column to change the alignment and the design. So you can change the width over here. And then if you have a background image, then you can update it right here. So that's what's the element over here. And then on this side, you have the background color. So you can change that if you wanted to and also change your text. So you can just come in and just change whatever it is that you want. So again, you can click in here and you can edit the text blocks. You can go into the design tab, change the font color and even your buttons. And remember with the buttons that you have the hover option. So I don't want to spend too much time here because I think it's just going to be repetitive, but I do want to make sure that you remember this stuff so that you can customize your website. And remember there is that hover and the default option for the buttons. And when you scroll down, you'll see some additional buttons. You want to make sure that you link them to the right pages and you update everything with your own content. And then you have the appointment form right here. So remember you can always edit this and add the notification. And if you want to go to the other pages, let's go and do that really quickly. And hopefully I don't really know how much more we have to cover with the Avada theme to make sure that we know how to use it, but I want to make sure that I don't miss anything that is important. So I'm going to exit out of this really quickly. So what I want to do again is go back to the layout builder and I also want to go to another page. So I'm going to go back to the pages. And I just want to show you one of these other pages. Let's go with maybe the resources page. So I'm going to click on this. And again, you can see we have the builder with our content. And then in the Avada options, if you want to change the title, you want to come to the title bar and then you can put in the title right here and the custom heading. If you want to change it from the page title at the top and just know for the featured image, if you come over here, you can update that. So that's going to flow through if you're using the page layout, but we want to make sure that the resources page is also using the layout that we want. So I'm going to open up the Avada builder and you can see that this is what the page looks like. So we have the title section and it flows on the left hand side. So just remember for the layout builder, the resources page, I believe is, is 
in the alternate page. So if I open this up, you can see that this is the resource page right here. So it's set for this layout. So if I want to change any of this stuff, I would have to open up the Avada Builder for the page title and the header section, and then I can edit this. So I can change the layout option if I wanted to. So you can see that this is what the alternative layout looks like. So everything is on the left-hand side. And then you can click into each one of these things and then customize it however you want. So you have your dynamic content right here and then your heading, which is going to be the title section and then the subheading. And if you make any changes, you want to click on that save button. And then just remember, you can view the web page on different devices to customize it also. And so that's how the title section shows up like this instead of how it is on the about page. It's just using a different layout. And then you can go in and again, customize all this other stuff, which is pretty easy to do now that you should know how to use the Avada theme. But if you ever need the navigator to kind of see what is the module or section, then you can see it right here. So these are blog posts, I believe. And you can see right here, it's this post option. So it would just show up with the blog posts right here. And if you don't know how to use any of this stuff, you can always ask, and there's always documentation also. So just let me know in the comment section or check out the Avada theme documentation for additional information. So that's pretty much it for the Avada theme and really learning how to use the Avada builder. We could go through the other pages like the contact page, but it's all pretty much the same. And what you would do with the contact page, once you want to customize it, is you just wanna make sure that you're using the right layout that you wanna use. And then you can also edit the contact form and the notifications. So remember that you wanna do that. And again, if you want to go to the Avada options in the dashboard over here, you can always hover over this. And then you have all of these different options and you can change the website template or go to the studio, all these things. I can make new video tutorials. I don't wanna make this one too long and too hard to digest. So I'll probably make some additional video tutorials for this other stuff. But just remember in the forms, for whatever forms that you do have, you wanna just go in and add the notifications. So even for the contact one, since we haven't updated this one yet, we can come down to the Avada form options and then in notifications, we wanna make sure that we also put in the email. So whenever someone does contact us, it's going to be sent to us so we know contact form. So you can always just scroll through and see all the stuff that you can add. You can add your title section or email subject. So contact message, and then you can see right here that you can add some additional stuff, a website, whatever it is. So it's pretty straightforward. Just let me know if you have any questions about it, but you want to click on that update button if you make any changes. And just as a reminder, make sure that you do update all the different buttons for the different pages and make sure that they go to the right place and you can always remove any of these pages that you don't want also and if you decide that you want to use a different website template then what you can do is just go into websites under avada and you can scroll down and then look for the theme that you were using or the template so if i go to the one that i was using which is this one right here you should see the modify button if you click on that you can actually remove all the content and just click on that it's going to remove everything and then you can go and import a, another template with all the demo content and it should be set up for you to customize. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions about the Avada theme and how to use the Avada Builder. So pretty much that's all there is to learning how to use the Avada theme and I hope you make a beautiful and professional WordPress website. And if you have any questions or need some additional help, you can leave a comment in the comment section below. And just know that there's so much to cover with the Avada theme that we're going to come out with some additional videos. So look out for those. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.